Good morning. Thought it was time for another vlog. Um, still using this crazy selfie stick, which for some reason I keep wiggling. So bear with me. I'm going to try to do better this time than I did last time. Although some of you were really kind and said, you thought my selfie skills were okay. So thank you. Anyway, it's Friday. Um, I'll be releasing a new pattern this weekend. So I thought I'd come by and just let you know a little bit more about it, which I've talked about it before. Uh, it is the DK Magic Heel Sock pattern. Um, I have one here and I couldn't find the knitting needles to, um, to knit the second one until yesterday. And so finally I found them. They were like tucked away in a basket. And so now I can knit the second one. But the other, I have the other finished DK Weight Magic Heel Socks with texture right here. And um, I'll insert some photos for you to see what they look like on my feet. Well, the test went so well, by the way, Meryl's sleeping over there uh, and Joe is out plowing. So if you hear him, I'm, I do apologize. I take try to take advantage of any time I can. Uh, hold on a minute. I just realized I didn't put the mic in. Be right back. The DK Magic Heel Socks have the same Magic Heel as my fingering weight sock pattern. Um, but these just use DK weight and they have a texture, as you can see here. And I used, for this sample pair, I used the Farmer's Daughter's Fiber. Um, these colors were gifted, me, gifted to me from a friend, Julie. Thank you, Julie. And a U.S. size 2 needle. And um, the pattern has the uh, tricolor version or a solid color version, just like the fingering weight pattern did. So I hope you guys enjoy that. It will be available on Ravelry, my Ravelry shop, and uh, my Etsy shop, and my personal web shop. I will put all of the links here, right here, for you. So you can purchase that pattern if you would like. I started to say the test knit went really, really well there were like no issues so and I just recently released the gingerberry shawl which I've shown you before but I finally did release it this is available as a free pattern on my website only which is the autumnacorn.com and it is a very textured meditative shawl with two different designs. This side is probably my favorite. Uh, it is an asymmetrical shape and it's knit with DK weight yarn. It's it's really really lovely. I've been enjoying wearing it a lot. Um, you can wear it as a normal shawl or you can wear it as a cowl. So, And I dyed this yarn using Matter Root and I alternated skeins so that, because every skein was a little bit different. So yeah, I hope you'll grab that free pattern. A lot of you already have, and I hope you enjoy knitting the gingerberry shawl. notes here so sorry if I keep keep looking down um, but I just don't want to forget anything oh yes I knit a pair of magic heel socks and fingering weight and I used a magic knot ball all right I started to tell you about my magic ball socks and I wanted to show you <clears throat> how they turned out these are actually magic heel magic ball socks, which makes them twice as cool. And 
they're the, exactly the same. Hold on, I'll try to give you a better view of that. The stripes match up perfectly um, through the entire sock. And that's kind of because of the way that I rolled the ball. So you can look up how to tie magic knot balls on YouTube. There's lots of great tutorials, so I don't want to go through that again because they're already done really well. But once you finish picking out all your colors and laying them out, what I did was I wrapped the yarn around my hand a certain number of times. So if I wanted 10 rows, I wrapped it 40 times around just this part of my hand. If I wanted it 20 row stripes, then I would wrap 80 times around the same hand. And this is approximate, so it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be close. And I'll show you what <clears throat> one of my balls looks like. <laughs> so here it is. And it has, this I've actually turned into a sleeve for a future design. So here's the sleeve. Let me give you a better look. Sorry about the lighting, guys. It's not the best, but... So yeah, you see it goes through all those colors. And that's a little bit better. Um... What was I saying? So yeah, when I knit the second sleeve, this is the yarn that I used for the first sleeve, it will be identical. And for this I've added a strand of mohair. I love the way mohair just sort of tones everything down and makes it all go together. So yeah, that's a fun project. As well as the socks. I would absolutely make more of these. Um, these were the 10, 10 stripe, 10 row stripes version. So, super cute. Um, I'll put one on for you so you can see how it looks. Hold on. Okay, try to show you. Aren't they cute? I love them. I am wearing a new design called the Gathering Vest. I wanted to show it to you if I could. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the back. Probably not, but I'll, I'll put a video in for you so you could get a better look at it. But it's uh, this was made with some gorgeous yarn uh, by Kramer Yarns. So here's the yarn that I used. And this was made right here in the USA, which I love. Um, this wool is a number five, so it is a bulky. Here it is. Here's the number. And this gorgeous color is called Spice. And Prim uh, Kramer Yarns sent me, I think it was six skeins to try out complimentary and um, I decided I would design something because I really enjoyed this yarn. When I started this vest I had to rip it out probably 20 times and it held up so well. Like the yarn held up after all that ripping out, ripping out, ripping out. Nothing. There was no like bad stuff happening. So I was really happy that it held up so well. And I love the ruggedness of it, yet it's still soft enough to, you know, to wear. It's amazing. So yeah, if you're looking for a rugged yarn, perfect for a sweater to wear outside or to keep you really warm or a vest, I highly recommend this yarn. Um, I will definitely be buying more of this in, in the future for sure. I took off the vest so that maybe I could 
show you better, but I'm just going to insert some photos in here. Uh, Joe and I had a photo shoot and he got some pretty good shots of it, of me wearing it. So, but it has really nice ribbing on the side, on both sides. And the back has these uh, three buttons and this other little detail in the center, this pleat, and as well as in the front. Uh, I'll just put a picture in. It'll be a lot easier for you to see. So before I sent the pattern over to my tech editor, I wanted to make sure everything was correct and I quickly, this took me two days, knit up another vest and I just used whatever yarn I had on hand and I did it in stripes. This is a lot smaller. I used a much smaller needle. There's the back. Doesn't have any buttons yet. Oh jeez. Um, let me try to show it to you laying down maybe. That might help. How's that look? <laughs> That gives you a better idea. Anyway, um, it's really tiny. It doesn't really fit me well, but at least I was able to go through the entire pattern and make sure that I had most of the mistakes fixed. So. I have also been knitting some socks out of New Tedon yarn, which I didn't really know I could even do. Uh, but I asked Carolyn, the, um, the maker of this yarn, and she said yes, others have made socks. So I started a pair. Here they are. And I'm doing, um, using this color here. I'm not sure what it's called, but it has a lot of beautiful pinks and greens in it. And for certain parts of it where I want to reinforce, I'm using uh, another strand of this beautiful blush pink. They don't look like much here, but um, they, they really make, I think, a really pretty sock. Here's one that's already finished. So I added uh, two strands to do the heel and the front section, as well as the toe. So you can see a little bit of a different color, but I love these socks. They feel really good on too. I'll put one on. They feel very rustic and very warm and woolly and just wonderful. They feel really, really good. I think they're going to, uh, hold up, but I'll let you know. I've never, this is like an experiment I'm doing because there's obviously no nylon in these socks. Um, I have knit socks with just wool before and they wear just fine. The only difference would be probably they stretch out quicker, but I don't mind that. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I may, um, oh, I ended up, I, I cast on very few stitches for this sock. I want to say, oh here it is, um, 52. So only 52 stitches and it fits me really well. So that's the difference from knitting with New Tedon and just a regular sock yarn. Speaking of sock yarn, I was dyeing up a few skeins not too long ago, about a week ago, and I came up with this lovely kind of copper, pinks, browns, creams. I love it so much. And this skein here, which I thought was super pretty as well. And then a matching mohair. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. 
There, there's quite a few. Um, oh, here they are. I tied up a bunch of minis as well. Uh, this is the, my favorite. It's in that same color family. But I also really love this pale pink one as well. And I knit up some minis for you guys too. In fact, I knit some. I knit them, yeah. I dyed up some minis for you guys too. The first day that I finished dyeing these, I put some on Instagram and they sold right away, but I dyed up some more and I have this pack here. I hope you could see that through the plastic. Um, these are tweed. They are 85% superwash merino and 15% Donegal nip. 87 yards and 20 grams each in fingering weight. So very pretty tweed and I have one, two sets with the five skeins and one with four. Uh, these are not listed on my website yet, but if you're interested, just reach out and you can you can get them. I'll send them off to you. And I did a whole bunch more back here too. Lots of pretty colors. Really I'm into pinks lately. Look at that pink. Mm. Pretty. I love it. Um, and again, some more mohair. Um, this one I just did yesterday. I thought that came out really cute. And this one. Trying to play around with some speckles. I should tell you the base of this yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, fingering weight, 415 yards, 100 grams, and it's a three ply sock yarn. So I have no idea what I'm doing with these yet. Um, planning out some spring spring designs right now, but whatever I do not use, I will put in the shop. So stay tuned for that. We have another test net that just ended for the Jess hat. You may remember this hat. It has two sides and there's the top. Sort of like a star shape in the top. And the inside, I asked everyone on Instagram which side they like better, which fabric, the right side or the wrong side. And the majority of you, I don't think anyone chose the other side, chose the inside. So this is inside out, but it makes for such a cool design. And the top. So this is probably how I'll wear mine. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for the Jess hat that will be coming out soon. Smells like jasmine. This is how much yarn I had left on this skein. And this is a Aran weight, 85% superwash merino, 75%, I'm sorry, 15% Donegal nep, three ply, 183 yards per skein. I don't have any more of this left in the shop in this color, but I do have some in a, in a much lighter, paler antique pink, if you're interested. I have some fun acquisitions. So I have this gorgeous pottery. This is the mug. Hold on, why am I showing you the back? You need to see the front. This is gorgeous. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that acorn. It's so pretty. I was lucky enough to snag this on one of, um, this is Mud Moth Studio, and Jolene is the owner. Here's her card. If you want to look her up, highly recommend. You have to get her stuff quick because it sells out. Here's the front. Of course, I love the acorn. 
but we are Instagram friends, and she actually won um, one of the Magic Heel Socks prize packages, so that was so exciting. She sent me this spoon as just like a bonus. Look at that. Isn't that just so pretty? It's her signature. Um, she sent the most beautiful card with it, too. She's quite the artist. Look at this. Look at that writing. Ah, so pretty. So pretty. And she drew, hand drew on the envelope. Look at this. What a fun package to receive. Yeah, I am so, so happy with with my beautiful mug, and I've already drank out of it a few times. Uh, what else did I pick up? Oh, I was watching The Crazy Sock Lady, and Kay's best friend, Carrie, um, has an Etsy shop called Stolen Minutes. So I went on to see if I could find anything, and I saw this adorable owl bag, and it just jumped right out at me, and I knew I had to have it. Look at this guy peeking. Is that so cute? On the bottom. And here is Carrie's card. Stolen minutes. And I just love it. And then the inside is this really pretty yellow color. But yeah, this is the perfect size for socks. Very well made bag. I highly recommend this shop. I also ordered some stickers for my planner. And these are kind of special because they, um, you can use them to tell when you started a knitting project and when you finished it. Let me get them out. I love these. So the top says cast on up here. And depending on what you make, you would choose your sticker. And then at the bottom, you use the one that says finished. But this one has a cowl. Mitten, socks, a scarf, and then this batch has uh, sweaters, hats, and shawls, too. They're pretty. And the last one... Oh, that was a duplicate. No? Oh, no, this is just the black and white version, but with the um, cowl, scarf, mittens, and socks. Um, she also sent me this freebie, which is so cute. Look at that sweater. I love this. So the name of, well, you can see it here. The name of the shop is Symposi Press, and they're an Etsy shop. They're not, they're not cheap. I, I think one, just one sheet was $5, so yeah. But I got four, four total and the freebie, so I don't know if I'd buy them again, but they're super cute and just very unique. I hadn't I hadn't seen anything like this before. So those will be fun to add to my planner. I'm almost done with acquisitions. <laughs> Sorry guys. Here is the last goodie I want to show you in this bag, and this is by Simply Serving. I'm sure you've heard of them. They have an Etsy shop as well. Here's her card, Lindsay, super cute card. I love it, and I love the back too. This is how you can find Simply Serving. I think I heard about Simply Serving from a homespun house a long time ago. Anyway, I was looking for some tiny scissors and some leather sheets to put on the end so that they don't snag all my my yarn and she had these super cute ones um, with these little 
rose gold stork scissors that I could not resist. And then I also got two additional ones in this cranberry color, which I like a lot. So yeah, the, I think these were about four fifty a piece, maybe, maybe not even that much. I don't have the receipt with me, but um, I have a couple other pair of scissors. One that's really small that I'm going to use for these, and then a normal pair that I think will fit these as well. So that's really fun. I received a free year of the app called Knit Companion. So um, when they reached out to ask if I wanted to try it, I said absolutely. I have the free version already that I've used, but the paid version, and it's only $19.99 a year, and it pulls in all of your patterns from Ravelry, um, and I think, oh, and from Dropbox, I believe as well. And it imports your patterns onto this beautiful app where you can then keep track of all your rows, you can highlight things, you can move things around, um, enlarge. There's so much that you can do with this app and I've just barely scratched the surface. But I plan to spend a lot more time just getting to know it, the interface, and understand it, uh, but I highly recommend that if you are a knitter who uses a lot of patterns from Ravelry and if you prefer to not have the paper version and you like to have it on a screen, try Knit Companion. You will not be sorry. It's a fantastic app. Speaking of acquisitions, I just got this t-shirt as well. Can you read what it says? It says, introverts unite separately in your own homes. <laughs> that kind of wraps it up. I got this from, um, I get this newsletter from a site called Introvert Deer. So, I was reading the newsletter one day and I saw that they sell t-shirts. I'm like, oh, let me check them out. And I thought this would be perfect. So, um, yeah, I love it. It reminds me of something I've been wanting to talk to you about, which is being an HSP, a highly sensitive person or a highly sensory processing person and getting your feelings hurt because it is crushing sometimes just to have my feelings hurt. I hate it. It's rough. Like it's the one thing that I feel like I wish I could control better. Um, but if I get any kind of a negative comment from anyone, it, it really stops me in my tracks. It makes me just like, I don't know, it, it's like someone put a knife in my heart. And it can be something really small. It can be, oh, I'll give you an example. When I released the Magic Heel socks, I had a, I had test knitters and all of that, and we went through the whole pattern, and um, there were a couple of very small, very minor errors in the pattern. Um, but it ended up being, I think, three or four, I don't even know. But the last one was like the page number. It was something for the formatting, the page number, and it wasn't a big deal. But I sent out the new pattern on Ravelry, and I get back a message from someone who basically says that she's disappointed with me. I mean, I've had so many other people that love the pattern, and they don't care that I'm sending out the revisions they're actually grateful for them and they thank me and then I get this pat this message saying that and it didn't say I'm disappointed in you but it said this is very disappointing and it crushed me and I spent two days dwelling over it and thinking poorly of myself and maybe I shouldn't do this and just doubting everything and does that ever happen to you like do you guys ever could you take one person's 
feedback versus a thousand people's feedback, but if that one person's was bad, does, is that the one that sticks with you? Like, it's just, and again, being an HSP just makes it 50 times worse, I think. So I just wanted to share that with you and just see if maybe anyone else um, gets their feelings hurt really easily and how you manage that. Sometimes I'm good at it. I'm good at giving other people advice on how to manage their feelings, but to be perfectly honest, it's it's hard sometimes. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Oh, I also got new makeup, and I don't know if you can see it, but I'm wearing it. Um, I'm still learning how to use it. It's called Saint, S-E-I-N-T, and my friend Lisa, hi Lisa, um, gave me this free, like I had to send in a selfie, um, certain lighting, and she gave me this whole analysis of what color foundation I would wear, uh, what color um, eye shadow lipstick would look good on me, and blush, and blah, blah, blah. And it, she, was, she was spot on. I ordered exactly what she said, and everything is exactly perfect for me, so highly recommend this makeup. It's called Cream Makeup, which I've never used before. I've used liquid foundations, powder, uh, uh, pow you know, pressed powder, and then the loose mineral powder, but I had never tried um, cream makeup, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's super fun. Super fun. Um, shop update. Well, I told you about the new mini skeins. Reach out if you're interested in those. Um, I hired a digital assistant and I feel like this is going to open up so much more time for me to design. Um, her name is Tanya and she lives in Colorado and she's amazing. I'll put her, um, information here if you're, if anyone out there needs a digital assistant. She's the best, the best. I've been so happy with uh, her work so far and just the way she's been able to help the automate corn. So I'm super excited to see where that takes me. Um, the new to you 2021 Mal. That I am hosting. I am one of the co-hosts of that. Liz and Leanne from Cocktail Hour at the Coop, which is a wonderful podcast that you should watch. They are the main hosts, and then they have a bunch of mini hosts, I guess we could be called. Um, but anyway, any new technique, any new pattern, any new yarn, any new anything that you want to try that involves being crafty and creative and using fibers, um, just use the hashtag new to you 2021 mal and there's going to be a bunch of great prizes. February 14th is the deadline for that so you can just use those hashtags on Instagram to enter. I wanted to give a shout out to some new podcasts. Um, the Knit Witch and Gabby is the hostess. Uh, it's a crafting pod. It's called The Knit Witch, a crafting podcast and Gabby just test knit my, my Jess hat that I just showed you. She's a wonderful young woman who is crafting her pants off, and she's just a delight. I really enjoy watching her, her podcast. She's a sweetheart. Um, Eden, which is the Dear Friend podcast, and she's from Canada, is another one that I've been enjoying, and I've been watching Eden for a while now. And she's just a sweetheart. She's young, uh, still lives at home with her parents, and she creates such beautiful things. Also, I wanted to say hey to My String of Pearls, which is another podcast. Linda and Mioka, they are a mother and daughter team who both knit beautiful, beautiful things. They are so much fun. I love watching the dynamics between the two of them so, so much. Um, and then, this was super exciting to me, but Sandy, by the lakeside, <sighs> mentioned my Magic Heel socks on her Instagram and her podcast, and it brought a ton of new followers my way. I was so flattered. I'm still blown away by it. Um, she's a huge 
I mean, she has a huge following. Sandy is amazing. I'm just so grateful. Thank you, Sandy. I know you said you had started watching the podcast as well, and I'm just, I'm honored. Truly, truly honored. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, I wanted to ask a question. Um, I watched a podcast, new to me podcast, called The Knitting Posse, and they ha were talking about all of the different ways to knit socks, all of the different patterns and all of the different heels and all of the different toes and you can do you know bottom up top down you name it um which by the way they mentioned the magic heel which i was so excited about as well but the host of knitting posse uses a us one and a half needle with um and she casts on 48 stitches i tend to use for my regular fingering weight socks i use a us one needle and I cast on 64 stitches. So I just wanted to ask you, what is your favorite, if you're a sock knitter, what's your favorite formula? Um, needle size, yarn weight, and how many stitches do you cast on? Do you like toe up, bottom, down, top down? <laughs> I like top down, that's my favorite so far. Um, and yeah, so she had said, I think it was the Knitting Posse, who said, once you wear hand-knit socks, you will never wear commercial socks again. And that's so true. I can't even stand the way commercial socks feel anymore. Yuck. Yeah, I'll never go back. Ever. Uh, I also wanted to talk about Caitlin of the Cozy Moth Knits. She's having a Palentine's Day call, like a Zoom call, but I'm not sure if she's using Zoom yet, but something like that. Um, and she's going to have it on February 13th. And anyone who wants to join is welcome. I think it would be really fun. Um, it'll be, so February 13th, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll have more details for you as it gets closer because I'm waiting for Caitlin to get more details, but I think it'll be fun as long as I have internet service in that day, because living in the woods, you don't, you never know. You never know. Um, that might be everything for now. I feel like I've gone through just about everything. Um... Yeah, I hope you'll get your copy of the Gingerberry Shaw. Um, and happy knitting, everyone. Bye now. <laughs>